to Feminism Today, everyone. I'm Sophia Johnson in New York. Magos Herrera is a jazz singer from Mexico, but she's also sung pop songs with Brazilian beats and crooned to Mexican classics with a touch of rock. In her new album, Air, she is a singer and composer, transforming the grief, fears, and loneliness of a deadly plague into a luminous collection of songs representing a celebration of her humanity and the healing power of music. Magos Herrera, Welcome to Feminism Today. How are you, Sophia? Lovely talking to you and with the audience that join us today. Thank you. So first, congratulations on your new album. The 12 songs on this album include new compositions commissioned by the Chamber Music America's New Jazz Works. Can you tell us a little bit about how that collaboration came together? Of course. Well, uh, basically, I, I got this uh, award from Chamber Music America's during the pandemic not related to the pandemic. It was just um, happened to be at the same time. Mm -hmm. And basically it's a commission to write new music. Um, and it was like the perfect timing because it gave me purpose and, and um, you know, discipline to navigate the, the pandemic with work to do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, so I wrote all this music except for a couple of pieces that are not mine are Latin American classics. And, uh, but when I saw the whole work at the end of the pandemic, and well, we're still coming out from the pandemic, but when I saw the work completed after a year, um, I understood that it reflected a moment in time and mm -hmm. my experience through it. Yeah. And then I decided to do an album. The album itself, I've not heard all the tracks, but the tracks that I've heard, the music feels very majestic. It's It's voluminous and almost as you mentioned, with an outward gaze towards where we are in this moment. What was your intention in bringing this project to life? Well, first of all, I love the way you describe it because um, to me, I mean, this album celebrates our humanity, really. It's, it's uh, an album that, that invites us to come together and celebrate our humanity uh, in every level, physical, emotional, uh, psychological, as, as we know. There are so many sequ uh, sequels uh, from the pandemic. So, but my experience during the pandemic, after obviously acknowledging the the the, the incredible loss that the world was having, and you know all the all the the terrible um, crisis that we were living, there was also a side that it was very interesting to me that had to do with um, acknowledging when when everything is reduced to the essential. Mm. Right, our survival in our everyday life, um, you start to really acknowledging the beauty of, of our humanity, what makes us human, mm. um, and and those things that we took for granted. That all of a sudden we understand the power of connection, the power of coming together, the power of um, of compassion, the power you know, like all these things. So to me, this album is, with no doubt, an ode to gratitude to acknowledge. Mm. Uh, our humanity um, and everything that makes us human uh, but also it's a celebration I mean we're all survivors it's a celebration of, of this life in its very essential way um, and also an invitation to 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 acknowledge that and hopefully we will have memory and we will you know in a in a world that it's so polarized polarized and um, I mean it's it's sick our our world it's needs healing <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. so hopefully this is an invitation for that, but with no doubt, it's a nod of gratitude. It's a joyful. Yeah. I love that. Now you graduated from the Musician Institute in Los Angeles and later studied with the Russian opera teacher, uh, Konstantin Jaden, then moved to Boston to continue uh, instruction in contemporary improvisation. How has this experience informed the very unique sound that comes out of your body when you hit the mic? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think, I mean, also the voice, as you grow older, um, your voice takes different shapes naturally in your body, like as you grow older. Um, but it was, it's been, a, I'm fascinated about voice production, like, it's one of my passions, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's um, 
Well, really, what I, I, I try to incorporate different techniques, including, you know, all my training with Constantin and with all my schools and all my, you know, academic training, and studying jazz. and um, But also, tr I try to integrate different um, disciplines, dance, yoga, uh, pranayama, you know, like trying to understand um, all the elements that really help the voice production to take place in the shape and texture that I envision. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a 30 year <laughs> journey. Yeah. Um, and I just put all together uh, yeah. in this mix to create my own method, my own uh, technique um, to create the sound and the texture and the musicality that I, that I pursue. I love, love, love. Now you now teach, which is interesting, right? You now teach at Berkeley College in Boston, a couple of other places. What do students get right or wrong about the evolution of sound and musicology as you've described it? Well, I, I'm not teaching currently at Berkeley. I, I, I have done some uh, master classes. I'm teaching at the new school at Manis Conservatory in New York. Oh, okay. Um, but I do, I do, um, uh, you know, like master classes and clinics around the world in different schools, including Berkeley College. Um, I guess, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to share beyond, you know, the instrument and my own experience and etc. I guess is um, the idea that today, I mean, there's something that we cannot change. The world came together, yeah. and um, and we, you know, the most important thing is to find your own. Uh, artistic identity that's the most important thing whatever that is right and if, and and to honor and respect and make the best out of it of whatever comes out yeah. um but but also to understand and that's more or less what i do i you know the idea that they will have come together and the genres are are tending to disappear or to cross one into the other yeah uh, so the the puristic definitions are um are something that is something that is fading away yeah. of course there are you know like orthodox and super you know straight ahead things and yeah. um but what we what we're seeing especially in new york is that you know just crossovers to chamber music and chamber music crossover with rock and you know or so it's uh, or world music or and it's basically what i do um mm -hmm. I integrate, you know, my my love for jazz and its elements and chamber music and world music from Latin America and sounds that I've listened throughout my life in India, in, you know, wherever, yeah. in Spain, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, but most importantly to me is just to, 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 to really um, share the importance of discipline and the importance of, of really getting the knowledge that you need and then to find your own identity. That's the most, that's the, that's the most important thing. <laughs> you just touched on an important point. One of the things I love about your music is that you almost refuse to stay in one genre, right? And I'm just wondering, um, how did this sound emerge? How do you even blend these unique ideas and intonations into something that's unique and something that's so beautiful as your own? Um, well, I, I don't think it's not 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 something conscious or preconceived, right? It's not that oh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an album with you know, like just like a chamber album or. Um, I just, I mean, I consider myself Sophia a storyteller be, before everything, before anything. Oh. Um, and to me, what 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 is most important is the story that I'm gonna tell, right? Um, and and the, the emotional gesture behind it. So the way I frame that story, that's, that's a different story. Yeah. Um, but obviously there are things that are there because I, I'm a jazz singer. That's how I, you know, that's what I love. That's, what, that's the way I phrase. That's the way I, in, you know, in, um, inter, interpret, interpret uh, with other musicians. I love interplay, I love improvisation. I love, you know, all this, the harmonic sophistication of jazz. Um, but I, I love curiosity and discovery. I love, I love the word discovery, mm. and uh, and it's never, it's endless, right? When you when you go into a journey of discovery, you really discover um, different aspects of yourself when you put yourself in different contexts. Yeah, and, and that just keeps my my curiosity awakened. And I love that. I love that feeling. So it's not something that I it's preconceived, you know, that oh, I'm gonna do. 
I just allow myself to follow my curiosity and then the music happens. On the album Dreamers, you collaborated with the Brooklyn Riders. How did that collaboration come about? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a lovely album and I love it because um, I think it, it was really a breakthrough in the way I perceive music. Um, it's an album that I recorded, as you all said, with String Quartet, Brooklyn Rider. Um, and, you know, coming from set, settings of performing with quint like very, very strong trios, quartets, um, quintets, uh, yeah, like yeah. jazz formats with New York Cats and to have this powerhouse in... Um, in all my discography, all of a sudden, I, I was really curious about, you know, from 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 uh, touring with Javier Limon with just guitar and voice, yeah. or from um, working with Jeff Jeffrey Segler with cello and voice. I was really curious to understand how my voice would work um, in a string uh, quartet context, since my voice is in the same texture range than the viola and the cello. And and it's woody, so it was, I was very, very curious about how, how would it, but also at the same time I wanted to have like a very specific um, harmonic approach, like very jazz, jazzy, and um, so I, it was a long process. I, I made sure that I I brought into the table like the right arrange, arrangers that understand these three words, you know, like yeah. jazz, chamber music, and they're from Latin America, all the arrangers. Um, but also you need it, to do this, you need a, a, an ensemble that it's not only master in what they do, but that, but that they also embrace, I mean, talking about storytelling, that they understand what you're trying to say yeah. emotionally. And this was my, my Trump era uh, response. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, so as an immigrant, as a Mexican immigrant, um, you know, to... to um, what my, my response to Trump saying that all immigrants are uh, criminals, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, to me, it was um, a way to show the, the grandiosity and the, and the mastery of this other side of, of Latin America, of great writers, um, thinkers that survived dictatorships and that their words still resonate to these days. Yeah. So the best quartet to do this is Brooklyn Rider. They're incredible. They're they're forward thinking. They're open minded. They're incredible virtuosos. They're they're incredible, and they did an, a beautiful job. And they re truly in, embraced the narrative. Yeah, we're gonna take a quick listen to the song Nina, and I wanted you to come back and tell us a little bit about uh, the song. Um, as you mentioned, you, the message is somewhat subtle, but it is poignant. Um, and I wanted viewers to sort of lean in for a moment uh, to, to your music. to 
Nina. Uh, Magos, can you tell us a little bit about that song, the composition, what you intended? And this is a beautiful poem by the Mexican Nobel Prize writer, Octavio Paz. Uh, Nina means little girl. And um, it's, it's a poem about uh, Octavio Paz writing to her little daughter um, and all the beautiful things that he, he feels when he looks at her in an incredibly master way. Um, but one of the things that I love about it, and I musicalize it for this project uh, that's arranged by Gonzalo Grau, I wanted to have a drive that it's very forward and moving forward and it's a, a Spanish seguirilla. And I wanted to, one of the things that I love about this poem is that at the end, he says, when I look at you, everything uh, enlightened, it gets enlightened and everything becomes music. And it's yeah. yellow music. The, the color of the music is yellow and it elevates us all. Love and it. to me, that's the center of all because that's exactly what I feel about music. You know, when, when you share music, when you're, you know, in the actual music making with others, the music makes, you know, it's not us. It's just the music and the, and the circle that takes us and elevates us all. So to me, I loved it because it just centers uh, and, and, and it says what I feel about music in very few simple words. Yeah. It's just breathtaking, really. Um, a few songs on that very album on Dreamers recall the Nueva Cancion movement in 1960s Latin America when songwriters paired with socially conscious issues. Do you see yourself as a social activist or was it just a unique experience to that album? I mean, I wouldn't define myself in a, as an activist. I mean, obviously, you, you're a public figure and, 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 and a lot of people listen to what you have to say, but I think it's everyone's responsibility to, um, to speak up and, 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 and change our world. You know? Yeah. Let's talk about the new album. Um, what's your favorite song on the, tr on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the collection? I love them all. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I love them all. And... Um, um, I mean, I, I just love the, na the narrative, you know, like our humanity, but Aire, Aire means air in yeah. Spanish. And I love the, the quality of this element of, well, you know, flowing and flying and, yeah. and um, it has also sensual uh, nuance to it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but also it has to do with the breath, right? With, with, with what actually animates us. So to, I love every single piece um, and the grandiosity and beautifully performance by all the people that was involved in it, the Knights, the orchestra, the Knights, they're incredible. Um, my quintet, Ingrid Jensen tr on trumpet, like everyone did a, a wonderful job. And yeah. you know, let me, let me just rephrase what I said before because this is important. Yeah. To the previous uh, question yeah. um, about activism. I mean, I, I am a UN spokesperson, and what I just said, it it, it, it makes like, I mean, of course, you, I'm an advocate of, yeah. of women rights and, and just the violence against women. But without that, you know, like, not because I'm a spokesperson, a UN spokesperson, but, but because I'm a citizen of this world, and then because yeah. I'm a woman and I have my story. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I, I just wanted to, to clarify that. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. And I mean, to that point, that was my next question. Audiences might not know this, but you are also a uh, uh, an advocate um, at the UN Women Mexico. Um, you engage in their campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How that collaboration came uh, into being, and why you decided to sort of jump into this very global arena in in, in such a big way. Right. So they invited me more than a decade ago to be a spokesperson for UN Women, um, as a, you know, to to um, to support Unite campaign to stop violence against women, but also to uh, you know for all the uh, gender equality campaigns. And it's been a collaboration of more than a decade. Yeah. And um, what that means is that through my voice, through my tours, through my initiatives, we create awareness. Yeah. And the reason why I decided to do it, uh, or to accept this, inv this invitation, I was incredibly honored, obviously, 
um, is because, you know, when they invited me, we, uh, they invited me to this Congress in Panama to understand what it means and why we're doing it. And um, to me, it was, you know, I really wanted to understand the importance and, and the reason why I was going to do it. And um, obviously, as a woman, yeah. uh, as all of us, we have yeah. our stories, right? Yeah. Um, but then when I was in Panama, and I, I listened to so many women telling their stories and the changes that they have to achieve and their terrible dramas too, I understood that my story is one among millions. Mm. And so it was very important to, to take away the weight of my own story, but it's, it's the world's insanity. Yeah. Um, and so I definitely, I mean, it wasn't a choice. I had to do it. Yeah. And, and after so many years, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and happy. And, um, and I've been learning so much, Sophia, because it's also, um, I mean, you understand that the, the problem is really, I mean, we're here in 2023 and terrible atrocities happen around the corner. So, um, and, and we're still struggling with uh, patriarchado. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and with this horrible violence against women. So um, it's my pleasure. And I do it through music, of course, you know, yeah. touring, um, we create albums that supports this idea. We created, we recorded an album to support He For She campaign. Um, we just presented Con Alma, my collaboration with composer Paola Prestini. Yeah. Uh, when uh, Women Congress uh, in last March as part of the CSW um, conference. So it's, it's just an honor. It's, it's just a, an honor to be able to be the voice of millions and millions of women around the world um, one that wants to change it, you know? Yeah. What do you think some of the more pressing issues are for women um, in Latin America? You spend a lot of time in the region um, and you're now in this ambassadorial role with the UN. What do you see, what are women sharing with you as some of the pressing issues? Is cultural rights an issue? Are human rights an issue? Is it violence? What's the pressing issue at this moment? I mean, it's everything. It's the way we speak, it's the way we relate to others. I mean, it starts there, right? It starts with our language. It starts with how mothers edu uh, educate their children and fathers, how they give example to their kids. Um, and uh, it starts there and then it goes all the way to, you know, feminicidios in, in the border in Mexico, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, so it's it's a very uh, wide um, uh, array of 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 realities that that um, that we see in our everyday life, including in New York. I have to yeah, say, absolutely right. So um, so to me, it's it's. I mean, it's it's it's. But at the same time, I have to say that. Also, people that have changed this reality are men and women. Yeah. So it's not a it's it's not a it's not a war against men, and, and I want to be very clear about that because yeah. I mean we're all agents of change again. Yeah. So um, and I, you know, I'm surrounded by incredible uh, male souls that, uh, yeah. including you know, talking about Brooklyn Rider, they're you know like this incredible quartet that elevate me, yeah. and um, so I. Um, it's it's big and, and it all depends on the on the on the country and you know obviously yeah. there are countries that have terrible you know like violence problems or others that it just you know like laws and um children care or you know so many it's it's just a, a very very wide problem <laughs> Uh, but you know, right now it's it's uh, generation equality time for you and women, and and the idea. I mean, because changes are slow, yeah. And there are so many things that need to be still in the agenda that need to be changed. So um, these changes need to happen now. Yeah. And with with all of us, you know, um, men and women, how yeah. we're how we're relating to the world, what we're teaching, how we're um, you know 
like this beautiful interview, like everything that we can do is 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 a seed of change. A seed of change, right? We just do what we can in the space, the platform that we have. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your writing because I am, um, and I think that you know, for most part, most of the reviews are always about how compelling. And so I, I went into listening to your music, listening to the, just trying to figure out how does she come up with these ideas? Do you write in Spanish? Do you write in English? Do you write in English and Spanish? How do you sort of um, bring about the the lyrics to the to the music? I think there is. I mean, it all depends. I, I don't know. I don't think about it. <laughs> I don't think about it. I just, you know, the, the three languages that I that I navigate with in life is English because I live in New York um, and I have the blessing to travel the world and that's the language that I use. Um, I'm Mexican. I speak Spanish, but also my husband is Brazilian. So uh, I speak Portuguese, Portuguese at home. So yeah. um, these are the three languages that I use in my everyday life. And um, I guess it depends on the story that I want to tell is the language that it's manifested. But it, again, oh. it's not something that I preconceive. It's yeah. just, it just happens. So for instance, in Aire, the album that you were talking about, my recent re release, um, there are there are songs in Spanish, there are songs in Portuguese, um, there are uh, songs with no words, you know, because I just wanted the emotion to be the, what, you know, the music and the emotion of the music to speak by itself. Um, but for instance, the one song that I recorded in English, uh, The Calling, it's um, like this idea of all these images that during the lockdown we saw of the world uh, manifesting itself I just want, I mean, after what we've been living through and after being exposed to impermanence and fragility, and I, I just want people to enjoy li enjoying listening to some music, connecting with their hearts to our heart and to, to heal and to have fun and to enjoy music and to, to see music as a, a beautiful expression of our humanity. So it's, I just want people to, to enjoy it and to, to, to be, you know, open hearted and um, we're going to be sharing from now through the next season uh, my album Aide, which you uh, uh, shared before, and we're going to be touring in the United States. We're going to be all the way through the next season. So we have my website. We're going to keep uh, posting all the dates that are opening up. Uh, we're going to be uh, performing with different orchestras around the, the, the country, but we're also going to be you know, touring with my quartet, which are incredible. Um, and we're going to go to Mexico and South America next year, Europe. So, um, so just check my, my website and, and hopefully we'll get to see you all. It was such a pleasure speaking with you, Magos. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Sophia. Lovely talking to you and lovely to, to share these stories with your audience. And I hope to see you soon again. Magos Herrera is an award winning jazz singer and we are going out to new music from her new album air Este puerto 